from day one, I've always wondered the how and why for the way things work. We're the only solution that can successfully enable autonomy at highway speeds, you know, and that's really key to enabling this to work. The big differentiator for what we built is that, you know, we, we really spent the past, you know, five years, um, or really up until just coming out of uh, stealth mode, you know, just, um, just around one year ago, developing really the core technology behind this. The ultimate goal of this industry has always been around safety. If you can have something that's a holistic solution, it really makes all the difference. Really think deeply about the problems that you want to solve, be passionate about it, and figure out creative solutions. While we've seen, you know, a, a, a new trend to be able to reduce the cost of these devices, we've actually seen the performance proportionally be reduced along with the cost. It starts with the data, garbage in, garbage out. And when it comes to safety, it's not acceptable. The biggest cost barrier to a lot of this stuff, you know, when it, when it comes to the hardware side, you know, it really comes down to the LiDAR. We've solved that problem. That's, that's what makes, makes a huge difference. I know you're working with some OEMs that you cannot disclose with us today, uh, but, but you are working with Toyota, and that's when you can, uh, uh, a relationship you can talk about. Need motivation? Watch a top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, top 10 I got a top 10. 10, top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Got to learn from the wise women and men. It's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because you are probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today let's learn from one of the best, Arton Russell and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Be curious. From day one, I've always wondered the how and why for the way things work and always wanted to just build things and build something new, build something that also is not just building technology for the sake of building cool technology, but something that really adds value to the world. I just have a lot of curiosity. At Luminar, we're making a new type of LiDAR sensor to allow autonomous vehicles to see and understand the world around them in very high detail. We're here to enable these autonomous vehicles to finally become a reality and at scale, and most importantly, be safe. To allow them to not just see like some objects some of the time, but all objects all of the time, which is critical to go from getting something that works like 99% of the time to the 10 nines that you really need at the end of that to create something that is truly safe and is better than human level capabilities. We had the foresight to build something completely from the ground up, you know, to target an industry that five years ago, a lot of people think, you know, wasn't even necessarily gonna happen. I think it takes an incredible amount of imagination and critical thinking to start from the ground up rather than just using existing and off the shelf parts and tools to help build these systems. Rule number two, acquire the right skills. When it comes down to it, I, I think uh, just as much as we are a LiDAR company, we are you know a, a system level solution as an autonomous vehicle company and partner to a number of these different major automakers. We're, we're now working with seven of the top 10 major OEMs at this stage you know, towards this vision of series production. And from a development perspective, it's, it's progressing very quickly. So for us, we're particularly focusing in on the consumer vehicle as well as the autonomous trucking market, um, you know, with, uh, uh, and uh, of course, in the case of Mobileye, they, they've um, uh, they've dominated the landscape when it comes to assisted driving system for consumer vehicles. They know what it means and takes. Um, but uh, but really, we're the only solution that can successfully enable autonomy at highway speeds. You know, and that's really key to enabling this to work. Uh, of course, you know there there are other uh, companies, other uh, you know developments that have happened from a lidar perspective. You know, and that's where uh, when when during the R and D stage, you know, you don't always necessarily need the capabilities of Luminar off the bat. But when it's time for series production, that's where we really come into play and you know for these volume opportunities uh, to be able to uh, to solve the problem. So. Um, there's no question that uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of great continued developments, but we're the only ones that meet the spec to actually get into production and uh, now have the deals and the scale to be able to do so. Rule number three, take time to develop. 
the big differentiator for what we built is that you know we we really spent the past you know five years um, or really up until just coming out of uh, stealth mode you know just um, just around one year ago developing really the core technology behind this working completely from the ground up building our own you know lasers receivers scanning mechanisms processing electronics rather than just using off the shelf components and integrating them together uh, and really uh, you know what this has allowed us to do is to be able to have a system that can see orders of magnitude better resolution and about you know ten times farther for dark, hard to see you know objects for lidar systems. And like I said, it's all about you know going from a system that can see some things some of the time to all things all the time, which is what autonomous cars are uh, or really absolutely need to, if we want to be able to go from you know uh, cool demos of systems to real world deployable and scalable cars. Rule number four: Have a goal. The ultimate goal of this industry has always been around safety. And with that said, it's crazy to put even into perspective just that we do lose 1.3 million lives every year out on the road from, from vehicle-related collisions and deaths. And these are the things that can be preventable from technology. That's the opportunity to be able to prevent. We don't have to have fully autonomous technology everywhere all the time to be able to make that happen, but this will have just an incredibly massive impact on society. These are the things that we need to fulfill, and these are the things that we can do today. That's what we're here to solve. Also, if you want to have more self-confidence and self-belief, I've designed a special free training to help you do it. The science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action to build a new habit. And, and I want that for you. I want you to build the habit of self-belief. So what I'm going to do is email you every day for 254 days a link to an unlisted video that will shift your belief forward to get on it for free. The link to join is in the description below. The number one thing that has made us successful by far is obsessive compulsive focus on the customer. It's about what you're saying to yourself, but it also comes at work. So whenever I was getting beat down physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever I was going through, just saying, you know, I would put, you know, you can't hurt me. That ended up being worse than if we had designed a car from, from the beginning. Rule number five, integrate. It really just makes a, a huge difference when you can have this hardware and software solution, deeply integrated. There's so many times where you see these different components developed in a vacuum, but if you can have something that's a holistic solution, it really makes all the difference. And, and there's no question this is what a lot of folks in the larger industry have been trying to do. Um, I think the key distinction here is actually though, starting with the hardware, you have a foundation, you have something that works, that delivers, that isn't just, you know, one day theoretically trying to make the physics work to have a product that meets a spec, but having a real product, you know, an, an auto-grade system that already meets this, this spec um, that's being deployed into production vehicles and then powering that and supercharging it with this software um, that makes the vehicles be able to have substantially greater safety capabilities as well in parallel uh, enabling autonomy starting on highways. And that constrained uh, highway autonomy problem, as Odgard mentioned, highway pilot, is, is key to being able to have a solvable solution in the relative near term. Rule number six, create solutions. I would say and in, in continue to encourage uh, folks in, in just the uh, next uh, generation of, of entrepreneurs to be able to really think deeply about the problems that you want to solve, be passionate about it, and figure out creative solutions in an interdisciplinary capacity to solving problems. Like in this case, we really had to take a blank slate approach about thinking about how you would solve something, like throw out the legacy approaches and how would you do it to be able to have the best possible solution. Uh, in our case, it, it ended up taking, you know, eight years, you know, from end to end to go through the whole development cycle of this, you know, and we, we had to bring on a couple hundred highly specialized engineers to build out these different components and, uh, and of course, a, a significant capital investment of, you know, 250 million that we've put into through this development to, to be able to get to this stage and now be in this position. So, you know, it, it's a journey, but you have to build it step by step um, and continue to encourage people to create. You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, we were living in the age of consumerism, but I have a huge amount of respect for creators, whatever it may be. Uh, and, and ultimately, um, you know, some things are, 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 are just really interesting on their own. Some things are meant to be, uh, you know, businesses. In this case, you know, we went all in on this and uh, exciting to be out there with it. Rule number seven, don't compromise performance. Your take is essentially that, sure, you could put together something cheap off the shelf, but that's 
that's not necessarily good enough for what we're really going to need to make this work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, if you if you want to talk about just you know cheap, for example, from a lidar standpoint, you know, you you could go down to you know to Best Buy here and buy a fifty dollar solid state lidar that sees out to two hundred meters. It's it's a golf range finder that tells you how far away a flag is, you know. But uh, you know, the, the reality is that that's that's something that while it sounds really good in theory, is like completely not applicable to autonomous vehicles. And I think that that's really the challenge with these these systems that you know while we've seen you know a a, a new trend to be able to reduce the cost of these devices, we've actually seen the performance proportionately be reduced along with the cost which actually doesn't really get us anywhere. The whole point is we needed orders of magnitude better performance from the start if we want to be able to get from these autonomous test fleets from where we're at now that um, need constant human oversight and takeovers to being able to get something that is truly autonomous. Uh, at the same time, though, obviously, it does ultimately need to be cost effective. Uh, you know, and that's, that's why you know, uh, we actually we, we did a, uh, an announcement just uh, a couple of weeks ago here about how we've been able to make this receiver system in our, in our LiDAR that a lot of people traditionally assume would be very expensive, really cheap, uh, or we made it really cheap, and only use one laser and one receiver in the product as opposed to you know, um, what would traditionally require you know, like 64 lasers and 64 receivers. So gotten the cost and complexity down dramatically, which is critical long term. Um, you know, ultimately the co the cost near term is isn't as big of a deal as you know for uh, for autonomous tests and development fleets, but it's it's important that things scale long term uh, from that standpoint. But also, you can't sacrifice the performance to be able to get there. You have to do both. Rule number eight: be reliable. In the areas where we're not autonomous, you know, in suburban and urban environments, in addition to of course when you do manually drive on highways if you decide to do so, then proactive safety will be able to help prevent forward collisions by actively taking control over the braking systems and steering wheel to be able to get you out of hairy situations altogether. It starts with the data, garbage in, garbage out. And when it comes to safety, it's not acceptable. So you have to have a level of reliability that's been unprecedented before. You have to be able to accurately detect all of these different types of so-called edge cases to be able to accurately and safely be able to drive. Rule number nine, provide value. The biggest cost barrier to a lot of this stuff, you know, when it, when it comes to the hardware side, you know, it really comes down to the LiDAR. We've solved that problem. That's, that's what makes, makes a huge difference. Then there's also getting the right setup, getting the right sophistication around all these different things and having the economies of scale to actually be able to make all this happen because there's no way you're gonna get the cost if you don't. You can't make anything work if you don't get it into series production at the end of the day, economics wise. Um, and then there's the software side of it too. You know, there's a, this, is, this is the kind of business where there's huge upfront development costs, but of course, huge backend returns that correspond to that. Um, so that, that, that when, it, when it comes down to it, um, you know, in, in terms of the economics for this, um, this is a solution that's, you know, it, this, this is not hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is not tens of thousands of dollars. This holistically, you know, all in, this is single digit thousands, you know, for, for what you're talking about for these kinds of autonomous capabilities. Now, of course, you know, it, it really just depends on, on what level of capabilities that you successfully enable. And there's going to be different price points accordingly to, uh, uh, for example, if you have a base case of you where you're standardizing it across, you know, a given OEM, uh, it, for a basic safety level capability, it's going to have a different kind of price point and pricing requirements than it will for, you know, full stack, all in autonomous capabilities for everything. And uh, I think if there's anything that's been shown is that there's huge consumer willingness to pay, you know, for these features as well. I mean, we've seen uh, the, the, there's serious dollars that are commanded for just basic assisted driving features that are out there today. And, and, and this is taking it entirely to the next level, actually recovering driver time and at the same time making the vehicle substantially safer. And, and that's where real value is unlocked, where it's a strong value proposition, you know, for us, and Zensact, for the OEM, for the consumer, really all around. So that, that, that's how we structure it. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is have great partnerships. I know you're working with some OEMs that you cannot disclose with us today, uh, but, but you are working with Toyota and that's when you can, uh, uh, mm -hmm. a relationship you can talk about. What, what is the status of your work with them and what have you learned with them uh, so far? 
Yeah, so uh, you know, it's, we've had a really great you know, feedback loop from, from our OEM customers and partners. You know, this is something that uh, you know, we, we dove pretty deep on these. We, you know, we specifically we picked um, you know, four OEM partners you know, uh, off the bat to, to be able to work with, and that's really what, what 2017 was about. It was being able to have the, demonstrate you know, the technology really coming together in these initial systems and getting it deployed to you know, OEM partners and uh, have something where these are not just like one-off sensor sales. This is something where you know, their, their fleets you know, are uh, committed to this and they're committed to this type of technology for you know, autonomous developments going forward with these partnerships. So it's been um, you know, a great you know, tight-knit relationship and uh, has allowed us to be able to continuously improve our product as we move towards, they like said, uh, you know, these lower, uh, low volume production systems to higher volume systems for lar one, larger test fleets and two, you know, um, you know, in the, in the coming uh, couple of years here, you know, series production, you know, volume products for consumer vehicles. And, uh, you know, it's something that requires a lot of in-depth work and a tight-knit relationship with the end automaker and customer to be able to cleanly integrate that uh, volume production product for consumer vehicles. So it's been good. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you just get inspired, you watch a video, you get motivated, amazing. The science says you have a 35% chance of actually doing something, actually following through. That, Believe Nation, is not enough. That is not you, not now, not anymore, not today. But when you get inspired and then you create a specific plan of action for what you're gonna do, that number jumps to 91% chance of you following through. And when you commit publicly to others, like leaving a comment in this video, it jumps to 95%. So the question of the day is your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week, put it down in the comments below, and maybe next week I'll profile you. Now that we have a high performance system that can see at long range and be a low enough cost to be able to put onto production consumer vehicles, it's something that was unfathomable just a handful of years ago. With that, we're the only autonomous vehicle company to be focusing in on this market, and at the same time, we're powering nearly every major autonomous trucking company out there. The economies of scale leveraging the passenger vehicle and trucking markets are also enabling this to be used for assisted driving use cases like the proactive safety system that we talked about to be able to prevent forward collisions and accidents ultimately altogether. And this is how we can see the technology standardized throughout the larger industry and make as big of a difference ushering in the whole next generation of vehicle technologies and safety systems. Launching this bold vision forward, we entered into a landmark deal with Volvo for the first automotive series production deal for autonomy in the industry. Our hardware and software is integrated into Volvo's next generation consumer vehicle platform to enable these highway autonomy and proactive safety features scheduled to start production in 2022. Historically, Volvo has been the industry leader when it comes to safety. And they've invented everything from you know, the three-point safety belt back in the day and introduced most modern new types of active safety technologies that have paved the way for next generation vehicle system safety. So with Luminar, expect it to be no different. We get to leverage the exact same product that we're building for the Volvo vehicles across the rest of the industry for other OEMs, for both passenger vehicles as well as trucks, in addition to the software too. That's really important to ultimately have a clear path towards widespread adoption in series production among multiple global automakers and over the long term, standardization throughout the industry as with other safety technologies. If you want 10 more rules from Elon Musk, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. First of all, you don't need college to learn, it, learn stuff, okay? Everything is available basically for free. Uh, you can learn anything you want for free. It is not a question of learning.